Finished Band of Brothers, that show was just amazing the way it ended. Now that we can finally sit down, watch the documentary together and see the whole thing, not just like the cutted bits and, and pieces there. I can't wait to, to get to know the actual real men from the Easy Company a little bit better. I don't think this is going to be like a, a you know, a crying documentary, but it's just going to be a nice, nice one for me to, to get to, to hang out with them for a bit. Could you recount again for me the incident in which you were wounded? I was standing on the top of this uh, hill at the aid station. A random shell came in. All I remember is a tremendous blast. And the next thing I knew, I was laying on the ground in the snow. And when I tried to get up, only thing I could see were the broken ends of my legs. Oh. And I thought my legs were gone. Both femurs were shattered. Oh my God. And I thought, I'm dead. I said my act of contrition. And then the next thing I thought of was my mother. Mm. Oh, I thought I wasn't gonna cry in this. This is already getting so emotional. Wow, I'm already feeling the emotions. My name is C. Carwood Lipton, <laughs> born in Huntington, West Virginia. Oh, I love that. Frederick T. Heiliger. I was born in a town named Inchilium, Washington. Mm -hmm. My name's J.B. Stokes. I was born close to Bonham. My father was a uh, worked for this railroad. My nickname was Babe. <laughs> Mom had ten children. Wow. So you had to work. It was a real struggle because we came up in the depression. Mm. I saw people that really, really were hungry. Where everybody was poor out of the depression. There's a work ethic that the Pennsylvania Dutch in this particular area are very proud of. I was married when I was uh, 19 years old. On December 7th of 41, the USA is in a mm. war with Japan. I said, let's go in the army. Something was wrong with you if you weren't in the service. It was just what you had to do. I was going to be in some top kind of a unit or I wasn't going to be in the Army. Wow. Life Ten magazine cents. had wow. run an article on paratroopers. And I just got interested in... Wow. Uh, Nobody forced you to do this. And it was the notion that you wanted to do something. Yeah. You wanted to be with the best. We was proud to be paratroopers. You know those people better than you will ever know mm. anybody in your life. Each man was like a heavyweight champ at a world boxer. We marched 118 miles in three days. Some of them lost as much as 40 pounds. Wow. You know, they weeded out so many. They couldn't keep up with them. You understand, they were good men. I couldn't. Climb this mountain called Curry every, every morning. Yeah. Of course, the name Curry. Even after eating Skeddy. We stand alone together. That's mm. a, an Indian name. I didn't know that. You see them laying beside the road, you know, going up and coming back, you know, where mm. they're sick. You would still go out on your own and run the mountain at night, which was ridiculous. Yeah. Because when you had to run it during the day, all you did was bitch and moan. <laughs> at night, they'd get a couple of guys and go up and do it on your wow. own. Wow. We, the paratroopers of the 101st Airborne Division, was as well trained as you could get a soldier to be. We packed our own shoots for the first jump. Nervous as hell getting on the plane. I love how they're putting in everyone's, Everybody like how it's cutting it all in. I broke my foot on the first one. There was a bunch of guys out there that already made their jump, hollering, you're going to be sorry, <laughs> you know. The first jump you make is not, uh, not all that bad. As I went out the door, I was blank. <laughs> But after that, uh, it wasn't as bad. Uh-uh. You get off and you want to go right back on again. No. The landing was the hardest part. Some of the big ones hit the ground <laughs> like a tunnel. <laughs> and you worried about most with your shoot. Did you pack it right? Oh, God. All kinds of ideas of what you might have I'd done wrong. Yeah, I'd be terrified. I'd we were thoroughly prepared, physically and mentally. Thus, we started off for an <sighs> Will I ever be coming back? I don't yeah. know.
you're going to be jumping behind mm -hmm. the enemy lines. Right, you're right. Yeah, you're no. thrown right in the middle of it. We well, yeah, we were stationed in England for about a year before D-Day. Just about a week before D-Day, they put us in. You couldn't get out of the camp. That's when you felt that this is it. They had the briefing to uh, tell you what your mission was. We knew exactly where we'd go. You know, knew exactly what to do. I had no idea that there was that much uh, hardware. We had confidence in our leaders mm -hmm. and, and uh, the plans and preparations that had taken place. We were confident and, uh, and calm. Mm -hmm. We carried everything that we thought we could carry. I can't imagine walking around with all of that. As long as I was in that plane and safely out of that plane, that's all that I worried about. Mm. Yeah, because there were some that didn't make it out the plane. The plane, whole plane went down. I had no feeling whatsoever. Like I said, my feelings was for my brother at that time. And that's why I think they nicknamed me Wild Bill, because I did a lot of killing D-Day. Right, where I, yeah, I remember that. The black was terrible. It was like a July the 4th celebration. You could hear it going brrr, like gravel hitting. That's why everybody wanted to get out of the plane as fast as they could. The pilots, okay, we got so much gas, and we're going to uh... have to get back to England. There was a certain relief, I think, when the green light came on and everybody said, yeah. let's go. The opening shot from the prop blast, and that's when I lost this famous leg bag. The British come up with this. They call them leg bags, 40 or 50 or 60 pounds. That's crazy, Everyone man. that jumped with a leg bag or supplies, they lost it. <laughs> yeah. It tore right off. I looked to see if my parachute was open. You could see tracer bullets burning holes through the parachute. <gasps> Only I was gone out and my leg was in, <gasps> upside down. And Paul rolled me out. Paul Rogers rolled rolled me out. Picked him up, threw him out. I guess. Firing in every direction. My chute fell across the power lines, and I hit that fence. Oof. It had glass in the top of it, and cut me up. You weren't even. Me. Wow. I, just, I was down. And we weren't anywhere close to where mm. we were supposed to be. Right, you gotta we start figuring out. Did, we had to make our way back. And we were running into Germans everywhere, but and then there I was with a trench knife and a canteen of candy bars in my pocket. Dang. They'd only run across yeah. somebody who had been killed. As on the beach, yeah. those people coming in on that, on those boats. Yeah, you clear target. Just waiting on them. They had it tough. Yeah. Hi, Mario, what up? Yeah, I don't want to think about saving Private Ryan either. Woo! Do they go and film there or no? The Germans had moved in there and camouflaged us so well. Twelve! Lieutenant Winters had us set up a firing position. Went up to scout it for myself, rolled yeah. out along this hedgerow. And he was able to size up combat situation. That is such quickly, an amazing, like, the best way to take skill. Care of whatever yeah. Whatever the problem was. And as you throw your grenades I'll charge up with the rest of the guys. I see a couple of Germans over here about 30, 50 yards away. So I pull out a hand grenade and I pull the pin on them. I got to them, it went off in the air oh. and, and I got one of them. All jumped into the first position. They worked them Germans like a dose of salt. <laughs> and I saw an arm stuck over that tent and one of those potato masher and that thing fell right down <laughs> in that trench. Oh, no. I felt like it blowed my butt over my head. Oh. Does he holler, help? He hollers, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I goofed. My butt. I felt like I kind of let him down. God. Right. It's beautiful when you think of a guy yeah. dedicated to his company. But that's the kind of guy he was. And that's the kind each one of them was. Right, to volunteer into that unit really takes a special type of person. I look upon them. Each one of them proved himself. And maybe if I had been harder, there would have been a couple more men going home. Mm, you can't say that. Chances of survival is very, very slim. We got that done in... Oh, uh, look at that. Edinburgh, me and Johnny Martin. Oh. Trump is a skunk. <laughs> well, Garnier and I get a tattoo. We didn't figure we had a chance to come home. Oh. At the Christ, we're 50% not gone now. Yeah. So. It's long haul. We were the replacements. Young kids that came in, they were the first ones killed. We were in awe of them. They were 
They're like heroes to us, you know. I didn't want to be friendly. I remember this. Replace was coming in because I didn't like seeing him get killed. I just, yeah. I don't know why, but they were the first ones killed. The drop was perfect. Daytime drops a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You can see where you're going. People are losing, continually losing helmets. Uh, if you got hit with this, yeah, you're going to be killed. from that high up. Our mission was take a bridge over the Wilhelmina Canal. Mm. And just as we got to it, it blew up in our faces. These rocks and timbers were flying. It took us till the next morning to get across. But once we got in, the, the Dutch, they... <laughs> It was just <laughs> their, their reaction. They loved Americans and still do. They call us angels from the sky. <laughs> their welcome was unbelievable. And they hugged you and kissed you. <laughs> we didn't mind. You, know, <laughs> you sure that's, didn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we didn't mind at all. Had some substantial battles there. They could observe any movement we made. They could uh, shell us, mortar, when they had an op target of opportunity. Mortar shell, and I threw my arm up like that, and it went through my arm and hit me in the head, and I was bleeding pretty pretty good. And I sort of peeked over. I see a hand there with a potato masher, and he threw it at me. I ducked down, it bounced off my helmet. I hollered out to the guys below. If Lesnowski hadn't a hollered live grenade and is laying right in front of me, in my face practically, I know I'd have either had my head blown off, definitely been blinded. Oh. Not anyway. It, it caught me in the face, neck. I said, get the hell going back. And I had eight, eight grenades. I could hear screaming, hollering, mm. crying. You know. So the doctor that counted the holes in me down at Nijmegen uh, said there was 32. The 88 was the fiercest uh, cannon at all. Anti-personnel, uh, air burst, Whoa. and that was the bad ones. I saw a huge mushroom cloud. No toy stepped out of it. I remember mm. that like it was just, I run up and I grab me. I'm hit all over. He said, oh, I'm bad. I said, I'm going to go see Jim. He said, bad as he was hurt. I already checked him. He's gone. Jim Campbell might be alive today. If he hadn't have said to me, you stay here with your gun. I'm going up. Never I sleep on it, I eat on it, I... I'm trying to hold it back. Never, never. It's just so bad all your life. You got to remember what one guy did because he thought it was his job that he took a shot for you. That's... Jeez, I didn't think this episode would get to me. An episode because we're not seeing stuff. Oh, man. I don't know who it is. This oh, is old I, Jack I Woods. They went right back. It sure looks different now. There ain't no snow. That's it. Yeah. <sighs> well, there's the town of Foy right over there. Bill, with those cattle grazing. Just seeing them down together down there. there. <laughs> Gets me a little bit. Of course, we'd come in here and go to sleep. We had all foxholes. Most intense I went through a shell. You couldn't believe it. You had to be here. Mm. Well, no, we lost Muck and Pantella over on this <laughs> side. They were killed instantly. Shell with a direct hit. Uh. They mushed meat at them. They were all gone, just disintegrated. Mm. Such an odd feeling. The memories of the men, the times. It was the most miserable place I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I remember this, too. Oh, yeah. A real cold night. First thing I'll say is I'm glad I'm not in Baston. Mm. We were short of equipment. Mm. We had confidence higher military authorities would get to us. There was very little information. Mm. Some of them even without weapons. Asking the guys that's retreating, you got any extra ammunition? We're marching towards it with hardly any ammunition. Snow. Cold up to your own. Trees are planted. They don't grow like they do in Maine. They're rows of trees. Oh. You look down a row and you can see a half a mile. Chairman's knew right where we mm. were. You'd be surprised how quick you can get through that hard ground when somebody's shooting at you. Well, we say we became experts on foreign <laughs> European soil. Frozen, it takes quite a while. Oh my gosh, that's you right. Just it's... it out. And by the time you get it done, they whistle for you to, we're moving out. That's, that's frustrating. We knew from that that we were surrounded. Earth shaking, if you lived through them, you remember them for the rest of your life. When a guy got hit 
in the arm with a piece of shrapnel, took his arm off, and he said, get my wristwatch off my arm. That always stayed with me. We withdrew back to our former position. And as we hit the woods, why this tremendous artillery attack. They were letting us have it, everything, everything. Yeah, I was reports, just so done <laughs> at this point. I'm scared the hell out. I mean, I was scared, but I think I was petrified then. Sergeant Garnier lost a leg, and Joe yeah. Torrey lost a leg in the same place right there. Bill and I were ahead of him, and, and Bill had not been hit. Joe said, Jesus Christ, what do I have to do yeah, with that? Yeah, they said that in the in the show. And he's out there and a hell of a medic, and mm. I went out to see what I could do for him. Bongo, I got it too. Sitting on the ground, his leg was mm. badly. He said, Lip, they got old Garner this time. Mm. I better not talk about him. Mm. No, I better not talk about him. We had lost some uh, very good men. When a man was wounded, we felt glad for them. He had a ticket to get mm. out of there. And when we had a man who was killed, we found that he was at peace. We're glad that he found peace. Squad leader named a Mallet, he says, uh, to this day, he says, I haven't got one scratch. He says, I'm afraid when I do get it, I'm really going to get it. He was oh. right. It is a great personal honor to take part in a ceremony never before has a full division incited by the War Department. With that tradition, therefore, will always be associated the name of the 101st Airborne Division. Good luck and God be with each of you. The Germans had started to surrender. Butcher's Garden, it's the re retreat that Hitler had for himself, his penthouse. I'm sure relax and confer a staff because those pants. Where they had their, their loot as well. This is a place to capture. Burned by SS troops in the war's last days. And Oof. the great window through which the Fuhrer gazed out on the... Wow, that is a huge window. No fighting, no shooting. Took over his house and... Uh, there was uh, obviously uh, a loot of all kinds that the men were looking for. Guns. Wine. We had picked up a lot of German items. <laughs> that place was full of this big arch, you know. Oh. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hidden in a subterranean chamber. This is music, too. artworks worth untold millions are included. A warehouse full of gin. Oh, it's gin. And uh, vodka oh, and just, stuff like that. What okay. much whiskey? Those people don't like whiskey. Set up a bar. <laughs> and seven truckloads of champagne and cognac. Good times. So we stayed pretty well oiled. Oh, that, that's good. <laughs> Dang. I started drinking it one day and I didn't drink. That, that is like picturesque. It looks like an ad. Remember, fill up this is a good part of the under, series. Under oh my God, face. I love this picture. It was a paradise for us all. I had no problem with looting because then I had seen yeah. The Holocaust. Yeah. And I had seen what the Germans had done mm. to, uh, to displaced persons. If they picked up a few trinkets, I had no problem. Mm. It was a well-disciplined army. And uh, those prisoners, they came down in formation. They marched down. I think we thought that the Germans were probably the evilest people in the world. And we found out also that it wasn't the Germans. Mm. It was the SS and the regular German soldier would not that way. He just handed me this little book mm -hmm. I could have. It was a little Catholic prayer book for the mass. Hey, I haven't got Nazis here. I got some Catholics. Mm. Catholic okay. good enough to stick one of these in his pocket. That man and I might have been good friends. We might and we might have had a lot in common. Of course, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and I was trying to do what I was. I have a great deal of respect for them as soldiers. Very disciplined, it seems. But they're still enemy. I was assigned this major. Oh, the... He presented me this pistol, offered his personal surrender. I accepted gratefully. Mm. Was there a reason they kept, they did it differently in the show? That I realized this pistol had never been fired. That's the way all war should end, with an agreement with no blood on it. Mm. And I assure you, this pistol has never, never been fired since I've had it. We didn't come home and, and flout ourselves. Oh, we get the after. Oh, great. Went back to look like we did before we went. <laughs> but how Just do you go, go back to work, to work after all of that? Life. Like, where do you go went from to this? Went work for a coal company. Took up a course in ornamental horticulture. Became an industrial arts teacher and a social studies oh, wow. teacher. I built homes. I went into construction. And I went with the CIA in Washington. 
Got Ooh. my degree in 1948. Got a job working for Nixon Nitration Works. We have a lot of other mm. wealth that means more than that. Everyone done well. I done well too. He went into construction. I want to welcome each and every one of you <laughs> to celebrate the ending of a fine reunion. Just to give us a chance to get together and talk to each other, relive some of the mm. army experiences, <laughs> type of affection that you get when you've lived through many dangerous situations together, rely on each other. If you see the people today, the bond you can't explain. There's an intimacy develops like nothing that I've ever experienced anywhere, not in college. I like brothers. Yeah. I'm back in my youth now. It's fantastic. I'd like to make 20 more reunions. <laughs> my family didn't know anything about it. Mm. I just didn't tell them. I just, wow. you know. We didn't know Shifty the way the men. It was like he, that was another life. Mm. It didn't even dawn on me that he killed people. I, I really, I really admire my dad, my daddy. <laughs> We've been to, to France and to that cemetery. There's crosses upon crosses upon crosses. And... These were people that I knew, and these were yeah. people. This guy here died at age 19 or 20. Whole life, never lived. Yeah. No children, no opportunity to have some satisfaction of building a life. These guys have been with each other in an absolute base experience. Knowing you're going to die, or thinking you're going to die, or <laughs> seeing people dying. I admire that. Yeah. My father, even on his tombstone, is Sergeant Joe Toy, 506th PIR, 101st Airborne Division. That's what he wanted on his tombstone. Uh, but as you know, every Army unit thinks it's the best. <laughs> but we knew we were the best. Think about most of them every day. You bet your life, I wore that eagle on my right shoulder. The heroes have crosses over their heads, cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Those are the true heroes. I remember this line, too. The son and the mother and father of the heroes of the Second World War. I think guys are come home. No, mm, you guys are definitely heroes. Very, very, very few heroes that came back from the war. They're still over there. <sighs> I have a question my grandson asked me the other day. And I remember this too. Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. <sighs> I served in a company of heroes. Uh... Is that Eugene, Eugene? No, 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 no. Um. I'd sing and go on here and try to come over and sing. <laughs> Bridget O'Flynn. How's it going? Bridget O'Flynn, where have you been for you to come in? Okay, we got some pipes. <laughs> parade the big parade me I Look at your shoes, ain't it a sin? He's a now performer. The song toy like. Well, that was really good. <sighs> I like the way they they did this. Like I I thought it was honestly just going to be like them talking the whole time, but I liked how they added in that B-roll of the actual footage of the war times. Like, you know, it's still black and white. You get a little bit of a visual to go with what they're talking about. So, and then I liked how they also like clipped everyone's bits in around the same thing so it wasn't just like one person talking about their experience it's one experience that you're hearing from every single person just like with the show <sighs> this is really good and you do still get to see a little bit of like their personalities and um through this and their stories and the emotional like they all seem to have that general same feeling about everything about like the real heroes still being over there and uh, just just how much they value the dedication and that they all like shared and putting each other above yeah we went through the whole of you know the season in this and you know there are moments that's like oh yeah i remember this and i i didn't want to think about that or good moments too so this was a really good way to wrap up the series and get to really meet the actual men from the easy company and hear their thoughts again not just like a few clips in the beginning of the show but i really loved how they did that with the 
the series, you know, by putting their actual clips in the beginning, but not letting you know who's who. And then in the very end, that big reveal, like it just makes it so, they did such a great job. I know that Firefly might not be something that a lot of you may watch, but I'm watching Firefly and then I just finished the episode where they were talking about, um, um, it was about the quote from a book from Shan Yu saying that the only way to know about a person is, you know, like when they're near death, like when they're being tortured or, you know, something along those lines, then you meet the true person. And I think that kind of really relates with this because when they were so close to death, they shared that experience and they get to know each other truly at the core. You know, like when push comes to shove, what type of person are you? And in a lot of the cases that you see here, like um, the guy who said, I'm sorry for getting hit instead of help, <laughs> you know, you, you, it is just incredible. And I, I really love seeing like the, the candid, you know, videos and everything from them. And this was just amazing. So thank you so much for recommending this. I definitely wouldn't have watched this ever if it wasn't for this YouTube or your recommendation. So I really appreciate it. Uh, the full length reaction of this will be up on Patreon. So you can always check it out there. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.